To disprove evolutionism, one need look no further than the rotation of the Earth. The Earth's rotation is slowing down at the rate of one one thousandth of a second per day. It's slowing down at a rate that scientists continuously add leap seconds to make up for the longer days. At this rate, one billion years ago, the spin would have been so fast that centrifugal force would have flattened it out like a pancake. There simply can't be enough time for the evolution and variety of living species on the planet. I had to investigate. Fun fact. Even though the year is roughly 365 and a quarter days long, the Earth actually rotates 366 and a quarter times per year as it revolves around the Sun. This is because as Earth orbits the Sun, the Sun appears just under one degree further east each day. So the planet rotates that small degree further for it to appear at the same place in the sky each day. That extra portion of a degree adds up to a full turn. Additionally, because Earth's orbit is an ellipse and off-center from Earth's perspective, the amount of time needed for the sun to appear in the same location each day varies by about 20 seconds. A day is actually 10 seconds longer when Earth is at its nearest point to the sun, also known as perihelion, and 10 seconds shorter when it's at its furthest point, also known as aphelion. Beyond that, there are other minute gravitational effects from the moon, the slight bulging of the Earth's surface at the equator, and even some major earthquake, which cause additional variances in the length of the day. The average length of all the days of the year is known as the mean solar day. When conducting or reviewing science, it's important to have unified standards of measurement. This includes measurement of distance, weight, and volume, but also measurements of time. A second being 1 60th of a minute, which is in turn 1 60th of an hour, which is 1 24th of a full day. Therefore, there would be exactly 86,400 seconds in a day. Up until the mid-1950s, this posed no problem at all. With the advent of extremely reliable atomic clocks came the observation that Earth's rotation was deteriorating. Scientists use a technique known as Very Long Baseline Interferometry, or VLBI, which measures radio waves from several antennae located in various places around the world, and then, using atomic clocks, sinks images to form a combined image. Astronomers noticed a slight lengthening of the day over longer periods of time. This meant that using the standard definition of a second for any sort of atomic measurement would become increasingly inconsistent. After many attempts, in 1967, the scientific definition of a second was changed to adhere to a much more reliable unit of measurement. William Markowitz and R. Glenn Hall, two astronomers at the U.S. Naval Observatory, and Louis Essen and Jack Perry, two astronomers at the National Physical Laboratory in Teddington, England, determined that the natural resonance frequency of the cesium atom was a near match to the standard second and would remain accurate to within one second every 1.4 million years. When applying this new standard for a second, the day totaled just over 86,400.002 seconds per day. Extrapolating back, the standard day would have been exactly 86,400 seconds in 1820, but had degraded at a rate of 1.4 milliseconds every century since. With this discrepancy, the difference between a standard year and a cesium standard year would differ by one second every couple years, and so the leap second was born. Although it is unlikely that the degradation rate of the Earth's rotation has ever been steady throughout history, at the current degradation rate of 1.4 milliseconds per century, even at 4.5 billion years ago, the length of the average day would have been 6.5 hours. This is nowhere near fast enough to flatten out the planet. On February 15, 1997, George E. Williams published a paper in the journal Geophysical Research Letters. The paper continued his report on sedimentary cyclic rhythmites of tidal origin. As explained in episode 6, these are essentially sandstone, siltstone, or mudstone deposits left by tidal forces and displaying various thicknesses. He discovered that the length of the day at 620 million years ago was 21.9 hours. At 900 million years ago, it was 20.9 hours. And at 2.5 billion years ago, it was between 17.1 and 18.9 hours. So calculations from the present 
and evidence from the past confirmed that the Earth's rotation poses no problem for an old Earth. And again, that's how creationism taught me real science. Learn more about the real science behind other creationist arguments by watching other episodes. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may be the subject of a later video. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.